Start the new year strong with a great deal on a new Toyota car, truck, or SUV. The most popular 2023 models are arriving now. From bold Camrys, stylish Corollas, and sporty RAV4s to tough Tacomas and powerful Highlanders. Find a Toyota that's just right for you with the new year savings you don't want to miss. For all available offers, visit Toyota.com. We make it easy. Toyota, let's go places. Lowe's always has more ways for you to save. On top of our everyday low prices, pros can save big when buying in bulk. Or if your purchase is over $1,500, ask about our volume savings program. A pro associate can provide a customized quote. Ask about our volume savings programs today. It always pays to be a pro at Lowe's. While supplies last, minimum purchase required. Selection varies by location. Lowe's reserves the right to limit quantities. Volume discount pricing quotes are valid up to seven days. Visit your local pro desk to learn more and start saving. Offers subject to change may not be available in all Lowe's stores. Welcome to the Sci-Fi Sci, a podcast about black science fiction and fantasy and staying on the same page in this here marriage. I'm one of your incredible co-hosts, Amber Wallen. And I'm Benny. Oh, oh, it's Benny now. I'm Ben. Oh, Ben. No one calls me Ben. Well, let me ask you, Ben, Benny, how does it feel to play video games for hours and ignore your amazing family? That sounds like a trick question. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that that's Benny in that new persona because Benny plays. That's, that's lots exactly what she did games. all last night. Oh, Benny plays lots of video games. Okay, so that's something I just have to deal with with this new persona. You know that video game there's has been making me actually think a lot about what we're gonna discuss today. Why don't you tell fans also who are at home ignoring their partners what game you're playing? Maybe they'll sure. Yeah, so, understand you a little bit. Yep, I'm playing a game called Mass Effect. And in the game, there's a character who has lived for millennia, uh, or millennium, and he's a Krogan, which is, they're like a warrior alien, group of aliens, and one of the characters have lived for a very, very long time. Actually, a couple of them. And it's been making me think a lot of my own mortality, because in the video game, you also travel to, across like different uh, solar systems. This Mm -hmm. one, it takes place in the Andromeda system, and I've been thinking a lot about my mortality, because I won't see any of those things. I'm not going to live a millennium. And so the game is very cerebral. It really makes you reflect and think. And sometimes that reflecting and thinking could last, you know, two hours, three yeah. hours. Yeah, it's quite meta Four as well, hours, because while you're five hours. exploring the galaxy, time and space is, is bent here. And so you think you've been playing five minutes, and then you look up and you've been playing from 4 to 10 p.m. That actually is accurate. <laughs> No, really, you know what? You needed a night of video games. I'm, I'm, I'm really cool with sorry. It. I got to that. I got to finish Girlfriends, so it's fine. I finally finished Girlfriends. You know that it cut off in like the middle of the season. Like they, there was no like finale or wrap up. That's sad. It is sad. Really makes you think of your own mortality about how it does. How just I could just be cut. Uh, you know what? Good job. Good job. I kind of like you. That's why you're here. So Ben, why don't you actually tell the people what we're going to be talking about today? We are going to be discussing a Kenyan film called Kati Kati, which means uh, in Swahili, uh, in between. And it is part of a a whole bunch of afterlife uh, literature and films. And then there's a subtext of afterlife in literature and films uh, called Purgatory Films. Yeah. And I love, I love the afterlife because one, I've never been there, right? And two, I imagine what it's going to be quite frequently, and how it's going to look like. And I, actually, one of my first representations of the afterlife that wasn't this Christian heaven thing was uh, No Exit. You ever read No Exit? I did not. Oh my God, Amber, this will have you just rolling in fear and existential angst. Uh, oh no, I don't, I, 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 when <laughs> you set that up to be like rolling on the floor laughing or something, <laughs> like I thought I was thinking like the good place, but even more funny. What? No. So that's not what, okay. That's, Tell me about no, I mean. That's not, so no exit was written by this French philosopher, Jean-Paul Chart. <laughs> Shart. That's his last name. Shart. Yeah, that's pretty bad. But I mean, that's it's We're one. Sar- it's one. It's probably not pronounced that way. Sart. Two. Sartis is like how it's spelled. Sartis. If we don't miss, if we don't, don't mispronounce something every episode, I know. we haven't had a real episode. I know. 
So the premise is that these people die and they're just in a room together and they just have to learn how to live together in this room. In a single room. In a, I guess single room. Woof. Forever. It's a and book. It's a, it's a play. It's a play. Is there a way? Oh, okay. That actually works wonderfully. Is there a you, way to leave the room at all? No. They're just there. I think it's a man and two women and there's a lot of misogyny as I remember. Uh, yeah, it's, it's great. You, you could read it in a single sitting. Anybody could read it in a single sitting. And That's fascinating. Yeah, you would love it. But also you mentioned The Good Place as well, and we've been watching The Good Place. Yes, we are dragging our feet um, because, you know, Netflix recently dropped, I think it was season four. Yeah, yeah. Season. So we haven't finished season four, but we love uh, what we love what we've been watching for seasons one through three. But there were some parts and times where I was like, okay, this is getting a little monotonous. Like, ra- wrap it up. Um, like, every time Eleanor would wake back up or, or I think... We where we left off, like, Chidi is starting over now. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if y'all watched The Good Place on Netflix. It's really great. It's this concept of this space in between and heaven and hell not looking exactly as we imagined. Because we think about, like, angels and everyone's wearing white. Or, you know, if you're my childhood, you were hearing about heaven, but then flipping through the Bible and saying, like, lots of white angels. And I was like, okay, so heaven is, like, a place for white people. Is there, like, black heaven? Do, do we segregate up there? Like, I, I remember having those questions as a kid. Those are fair questions. Right? And, well, and uh, Kati Kati, since mm-hmm. it is a Kenyan film, all the characters are black in this film. Yep. And it, <laughs> when we were watching it, I think one of the first things he said, the main uh, the main character... Kalechi. Kalechi is a dark-skinned black woman. Mm -hmm. And the first thing you said, I think, as we were watching it, was, oh, she can never star in a film in the United States. Right. I mean, she is... I mean, she's probably a model. So this actor, the main lead in the movie, her name is Kaleche. Um, IRL, her name is Nyokabi Gitaiga. This actor is stunning. She's, like, tall, model-esque rich with melanin, beautiful, um, short hair, very kinky hair, but short and shaved, sort of like mine. And you can just tell there's a different standard of beauty in the West than there is in this, uh, Kenyan film because she is the protagonist and they fawn after her in the way that America would fawn after like a Farrah Fawcett or a, I don't know, a Megan Fox. Right as the movie started, I remember thinking to myself, she would never get an opportunity to star in an American film or a woman that looks like that. Because even even the way that we were introduced to like Lupita Nyong'o was 12 Years a Slave. It wasn't because she was like the leading lady in a horror film. She eventually got to be that. But you don't get to be a very dark skinned person with kinky hair that doesn't have a sew in in a leading role as the object of desire like that just doesn't happen so i was very excited that we were watching a kenyan film so that we can see like the different standards of beauty and see like you know i'm not crazy i'm not ugly it's just in other parts of the world there are different standards of beauty and in the part of the world that i'm in i someone that looks like me someone a little bit like thicker not a size two is not going to be the object of desire in a film now we're getting to the point where i'm i might show up in that film but I'm not going to be the leading lady. Yeah, even Black Panther, where Lapita shows up, she's not the star. Even 12 Years a Slave, as you said, she's not the star. Mm-hmm. Has she starred in any movie? Us. Oh, you're right. What's wrong with you? Yes, she was the star. Yes, but at so that point, we had known Lupita for a while. Like, I just, tr- I want to believe we're getting better, you know, we as in, like, representation in media, but I don't think... Us could have been Lupita's first movie. There's no way. I'm really trying to think of like a darker skinned, short hair, like represents true strength actress. Are there a lot of films though that have someone's first movie as a starring role? There are films that do that. They're rare and usually they star children. The ones that I'm thinking of. I think if we think about like, I don't know, 
Jamie Lee Curtis's first film or probably Meryl Streep's first film, which I mean, Judy Garland's first film. They are not the object of desire as far as like a love interest per se, but it's like, we know why that girl's there. That girl's there because she's beautiful and everybody sees it and everybody knows it and everybody's like look at her eyes look at her hair i don't know you you know what i'm trying to say right i do yeah i think you're saying something uh very accurate but also and and there are different standards of beauty but also we see very similar standards of beauty as well Mm -hmm. where you know physical size uh yeah she looks like a model Mm -hmm. symmetry of of the face all these actually Mm -hmm. Um, evolutionary characteristics. But she's also, like, presumably not wearing any makeup. Like, she looks very... Her and all of the other characters, uh, with the, a few exceptions which we'll talk about later, are very natural face. Like, even in America, you can tell when someone's like, they look natural, but they're definitely wearing makeup. These characters look like they are not wearing any makeup right. at all. Right. They look, they look incredible. It was like, oh my gosh, I see a film with like real people in it. Even the leading guy, he didn't have like a six pack or whatever. Yeah, that's Toma. right. Yeah. He was, he was probably my height, but he was so, I mean, he did a great job. So why don't you talk a little bit about the movie? Now that we're like describing the physicality of the characters. Yeah, sure. Uh, Kati Kati means, as I said in Swahili, between. So this f- would fall into a purgatory movie. So it's not about heaven or hell, which the good play, play deals with specifically heaven and hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there are, there are way less movies that deal just with purgatory or this in between place. And we were, you know, discussing a little bit of the lovely bones mm-hmm. where the, where the person who's murdered is still on earth. Her soul has not made that transition. Yeah. And that would be something that we would call in between. So what, what basically happens is that certain people die and uh, maybe a few years or a few weeks after their death, they show up in this almost resort yeah. called Kati Kati. It looks like a resort that you would go to in the bush in Kenya Mm -hmm. and sort of go hiking or whatever. They show up and when they show up, they walk into a group of people together, just hanging out, chilling, and they start to wonder, what is going on with your stomach? (laughs) I don't know. I'm trying to think about what I ate last. Is that coming from you? <laughs> or my belly. Or like from within the that, walls. Maybe, maybe the bike can't. Yeah, it's the my belly's in the in-between right now. <laughs> it's so it's is. truly because it's like I didn't just eat, which I guess will be heaven, and I haven't shat it out yet, which is pure hell. So <laughs> <laughs> it's still going. <laughs> maybe it'll stop. Let me just keep drinking some coffee. No, <laughs> I don't. What is going on? I don't. But essentially, they show up, and right within the first five minutes, you realize these people are dead because this new this new. uh, Well, they say you're here because you're dead. Yeah, this new arrival. The new arrivals come in, and everybody else in this village or this resort say right up right away, "You're here because you're dead." That's the exact line. Uh, which is fun to hear, by the way, because the the movie's in Swahili and it's in English, and I think. It's in another language as well, and sort of it shifts back and forth mm-hmm. between all these languages, and it's very natural of how people uh, would talk um, in Kenya. And the reason I know that is my father has been to Kenya mm-hmm. multiple times. He, he was in Nairobi. Uh, my sis, both two of my sisters have been to Nairobi. Mm-hmm. Have been to Kenya uh, as well uh, because it is a very Christian country comparatively and due to colonialism, uh, the British mandate and the turn of the century <sighs> that has sort of just, so, just uh, the turn of the century right now is my fucking stomach, right? I don't know. That, what you're, <laughs> <laughs> something colonized. I'm not even going to edit stomach, it out some, because some, this is a real body oh, over here. Yeah. Go, keep going. But yeah, so Christianity has like this very, very firm hold mm-hmm. in, in that, in that country. And so I have always associated 
Kenya in my mind as a place where you go do mission trips and convert people to Christianity. Mm-hmm. So this definitely Which is why your father was there. Which was why my father was there, who is a who is a pastor and why my sisters were there for, you know, Christian purposes. And we actually would have um uh bishops, what they call not your Catholic bishops, but in evangelicalism, basically anybody can say that they're a bishop. No one needs to anoint them or anything. They can just say that they're a bishop if they are in charge of, you know, a certain number of churches. And there's no specific number of churches, which is a little strange. So we had this man who would come to our house. My, my, our church supported him. His name was Bishop Makona. And he would come to our house and he would tell me stories about Uh, Nairobi. He would tell me stories about Kenya and it was really fun because I I remember oftentimes he would come sort of in October and so I would have to be outside raking leaves or whatever and he'd come and help me out um, in between going to churches and and speaking and we would just be outside and it was fun to hear um, about his children. He had, I think he had more than six children. Uh, Fun to hear about the kind of uh, work he had to do growing up. And I, so in my mind, Kenya has a very different, um, connection than what this movie shows, uh, which, yeah, I, it was, it, it was just, it was weird to see something that wasn't showing this Christian, Lens and- this Christian lens, but there, there definitely are Christian elements in it. Oh, certainly. So to talk a cu- to talk a little bit about some of the main characters, you have Kaleche, who has just arrived, this very beautiful model-esque woman. And she's like, where am I? What's going on? And so immediately when they tell her like, you're dead, she tries to run away. And as she's running, she hits this like invisible wall. So, you know, think about, like, a mime creating that wall. Um, And then as the movie progresses, she starts to learn. Because everybody else in the village knows how they died. She doesn't. And she starts asking people. I know there's one other character. His name is Mikey. He's, like, a high school graduate. He wears, like, his cap and gown. And I won't tell you how he died. But everyone else in the story knows how they died. So... Kaleche is on a mission to find out how she died, but this is the only thing about it. Even though this film is wonderfully done, we're going to get into some of the wonder of this film and how this film did a great job creating like special effects without there being any CGI, any expensive budget, um, presumably. One thing that was frustrating because, you know, I'm very like impatient <laughs> is the film was like an hour and 12 minutes. And they built the suspense for, like, too long. So I remember at one point, Ben and I had paused the movie, and we still hadn't found out how Kaleche had died around, like, 45 minutes in. We're like, okay, are we ever going to find out? There there were so many times where I was like, this is, you've strung us along for the first third of the movie. Give us a little taste of what's going on here. So I would, I would, tell anybody who's watching it like try to be a little patient because it's you're you're gonna be pausing like damn when is the movie gonna end because i still have no answers 50 minutes in to to that point the movie did a great job at the beginning telling you right away that people die and show up in this place it's in between and there's these rules that Kurt Vonnegut, the science fiction writer, has said when you're writing a short story, which is right up front, tell as much as you can. Mm-hmm. Don't try to build suspense. Tell as much as you can and then build from that. And then you'll end up creating suspense later. So they did a great job right away. They're dead. And then they should have more quickly told us how she died. Yeah. And then they could have explored other parts of this in between world because there are some really so cool, cool like parts world of the in between wor- world. There's some cool like wor- uh, world building yeah. within this microcosm of the in between. One of them is that when you stay inside your hotel room, basically 
you can write anything you want on a piece of paper and it just shows up the next day. Mm-hmm. Like items. So you're like, I want to not items. wear a potato sack every day. So let me get some new clothes. Let me get a, a cool instrument that I used to play on earth and it shows up the next day. Which is very creepy. And so they could have explored more about that. And they don't really explain anything about that. They just say that this is part of the world and they don't give any reason, which fine. I'm okay with that. The other cool world building aspect to it is in the morning you have like this very short window of time to eat. Mm-hmm. So think like your hotel uh, breakfast, your continental breakfast, your continental breakfast, five minutes. But it is a hard stop and a hard. <laughs> it's a hard stop. And what happens when <laughs> when everything stops? There's this loud like shaking. It feels like an earthquake. The whole earth. It feels like an earthquake, and then all the food just disappears. Yep. And and then they could have explored some of that. The other thing is that when people move on, Mm -hmm. it happens or there's a foreshadowing of them moving on when their skin starts to turn this, like, ashy white. Yeah. It's, like, ashy skin, like, times 1,000, though. Like, uh, but it's not, like, white skin. It's, it's not, not like white people's a, skin. Yeah, it's a dusting. It's a, a chalk. Yeah, it's a chalk. It's an al- like almost like an albino color. Yeah, I would say that. Great. So parts of yes, parts of your body turn, which is why I think it's so it's so important for us to watch foreign films because I think if this was an American story, there would have been some like some spell or some like a lot of computer animation to try to convey the message that your soul is starting to convert. And in other countries, it's just like, we just need something simple. It doesn't have to be a huge gesture. It could be like, let's literally paint parts of people's skin to show that transition. And it was still just as effective. And pe- so people would start to sort of hide those parts of themselves that would change a little bit. Like, if you remember, now that I'm thinking about it, the first day that she arrived, she wore this, like, longer dress, which was not her style. It was, like, ill-fitted. And the second day, she wrote on the piece of paper, like, let me get a little tank top and some short shorts. And so she's walking around the uh, resort. She's walking around Kati Kati in this tank top and short shorts. And everybody's like, ow, ow, like, looking good, whatever. And I remember this woman confronting her, being like, you gonna show all that? Letting it all out too soon, something, something. Which at the time I was like, damn, why is she like slut shaming old girl? But I think when they're all dead, when they're literally when they're all, all dead, dead, there's nothing that can happen. You can't die again in this world. Uh, well, you kind of can, but they're they're all dead. And now, like I'm just now making this connection that I think that that woman did that because she's like, you're gonna not want to be showing that much skin because at some point parts of you is going to start to turn. And you're going to want to cover that up. Oh, because some people who haven't been, who've been in Kati Kati for years and years and years, mm-hmm. their skin doesn't turn. So they don't get to move on. And yeah. you, you soon just. Or maybe small parts of their skin start to turn, but it's covered. Like everybody, like think about. Um, well, you want to hide that you're, that you're changing yes. over to the next side yes, to not do. make other people feel bad. That right. they're that you're gonna get to the next side before them, and that can because th- there's a jealousy. I mean, kati kati, like yes, you can get whatever you want. Yes, you can drink as much alcohol as you want. Yes, you can get uh, instruments and play. It is not a good place, and it is actually really torturous for the people who are there because you are re- like basically declined moving away out of that dome. You can't get out of that dome. And actually how you move to the next stage Mm -hmm. is a little unclear to me because each person does it a little bit differently. I mean, it looks like you walk over this bridge into hell or you like walk into the woods and that is the hell. Like you're like, I've had enough. I can't do it. I'm, I'm turning from side to side. I'm turning. My skin is turning. My stomach is turning. I got to get out of here. Do you, should so we like pause in. so you can go take a shit? No. And then come back? Uh, God damn it. We can't. We can't. It's fine. I really don't have to use the bathroom. It's just 
purgatory. I, I think my stomach knew we were filming this episode, so it was like, there has to be a sound effect <laughs> to embody the content. <laughs> oh boy. So the the big the big sort of conflict in in the film mm-hmm. is how to get out of Kati Kati. Yep. And then for Kaliche, particularly her, uh, for her to discover how she died. And how you get out requires some sort of internal emotional work of coming to terms with whatever unfinished business you have from mm-hmm. from the previous life. And so you mentioned this character, Mikey, mm-hmm. who wears his graduation. Yeah, uh, young kid. Young kid and very youthful. And he is haunted, actually, because in this, in Katikati, you get haunted by people from your previous life, and they actually show up. So mm-hmm. he's haunted by his mother, and there's this, I think, one of the most powerful scenes, uh, his mom uh, shaming him for killing himself. So you, you discuss, I know we weren't going to do spoilers. Sorry, but Mikey kills we himself. We kind of have to. We it's, it's, wait, we're, I, I think we're struggling to talk about and around spoilers. Spoilers. Yeah. So he, his mom is shaming him for how he died. And once he comes to term with that shame, he is then able to move on. Mm-hmm. And this very emotional, powerful scene And you know it's this dream sequence because his mom's uh, wardrobe is changing throughout the same scene. So that was really, really, really cool. Another character, uh, the priest. Yeah, King. King. The another character of King, the priest. He is haunted by uh, his parishioners. And he committed this really heinous... um, not it wasn't a crime, but he committed this heinous act, not fulfilling his priestly duties, not being someone who protects and, and serves uh, as as a priest, and so he's haunted by his parishioners, and they show up in his in his room in this really creepy scene. Yeah, and so once he comes to terms with that, then he's able to just in this like powerful moment, he burns all his priestly garments and then he walks out of Kati Kati. He's able to get out. And it's, it's really, it really, uh, made me think like what unfinished business I'm going to have when we leave, when we leave. And I know, you know, you're going to have, you know, what unfinished business after this episode you're going to have, which is bathroom, right? On your unfinished we all have unfinished business. I just feel like since since you're taking jabs, I definitely feel like whenever I die, because I'm such a productive person, I'm going to have less unfinished business than you. That, because you like to procrastinate. That sounds... So you're going to be in purgatory like, damn, I left all these tasks behind? Like, I better get to fucking work. <laughs> you're like, I got a novel to finish. Then I didn't pay this bill over here. And I'm going to be like... What do we got, God? I only have one or two things to do. That would actually be a more realistic movie where you're in purgatory <laughs> and the things that haunt you are like bills. bills. Like student, the, loan. student loan. Student <laughs> yeah. loan. Well, well, student loan. Well, most of them are forgiven, at least the ones owned by the government when you die. So that's that's good. But mm. I, it sort of makes me think. What's that joke about Halloween costumes? Like if oh yes, yeah, Cedric the Entertainer. This is why I really miss Def Comedy Jam and all this blackness. Cedric the Entertainer made this joke one time about how Halloween would really be scary if kids started dressing as things adults hate. So it was like uh, a gas station that said six fifty. He was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> like, just real th- a summons for jury duty costume. It's like, oh. he's like, "Oh God, please no, please!" Like that's way more scary to him than ghouls and goblins. Yeah, I think it's sort of disturbing for me to think that the thing that would haunt me in purgatory would not be, like, the lack of relationships that I've built on this earth, but unfinished bills or, like, <laughs> the travel I didn't get to have, you know, like that place in Thailand that, yeah. remember why we didn't go? Oh, yeah, you got food poisoning. Yeah, but then that was the first reason we didn't go, and the second reason, you don't have to share. 
But yeah, I got. Oh, when I got my passport stolen. Yeah, so that would be like that would be like. So it. we spent a whole day me trying to get my passport. So back. in purgatory, I would be haunted by us not getting there. That's still, you know, we're gonna have to go back. Yeah. To and visit. But anyway, back back to the film. Kati, Kati, it's good, y'all. Just just. It's a slow burn, which I... But it's not too slow because it's only an hour and 15 minutes. God, it, it's kind of like... It's not a marathon, but it's like a 15K. Yeah. And then right when you're tired, you're like, oh, here come the little volunteers with a cup of water. But I'm still running, so why can't we just get to the... Like, I, I remember being a little bit frustrated with the pacing. Not frustrated, but just... I, I And even when the film ended, there were still quite a few unanswered questions. Like one of my questions is that you also learn in Kati Kati that when someone dies, they don't immediately go to Kati Kati. They could or they could not. So let's say me and Ben sadly were killed because our house burned down, right? Ben Or we both die in a car accident. Well, I didn't want to spoil the... I I don't want it to be too closely to the movie, so that's why I chose that. Oh, okay. So... Men. <clears throat> uh, so we both die, sadly, tragically, in a house fire. That seems a little bit too close because yesterday there was a huge ass fire I know. right I next to us. I sent you an article about what happened too. It's super sad. Um, so Sorry. <laughs> let's try this again. Being a woman. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get a point of course. Uh, so it's we funny how I'm the one interrupting you now because usually you're the one interrupting me. I just have to throw that out there. Yeah, that's that's fair, but it's like poetic justice for what's really happening outside of our home. Yes, go. So, fourth attempt to explain <laughs> the scenario. Uh, we die in this tragic house fire. Ben might immediately go to Kati Kati, but I might not make it to Kati Kati for years. So, like, let's say Ben gets there, and then three years later I come. Of course, I'm not remembering that Ben and I are married. And I think Ben is then tasked with being like, oh my gosh, that's my wife. Do I get to tell her how we died, or do I have to sort of, like, let her figure out how that happened? Blah, blah, blah. Right? Right. So... I'm just going to say spoilers. Go watch the film just yeah. because it needs it needs more watches. Because I think... Um, it's on Amazon. Director, it's free. Yeah, it's free. And directors need, directors from Kenya, directors from you know other countries who are not always given a market need to have their films watched. Period. Uh, this film is directed by Mbinti Masya. So Incredible go, force. Yeah, so go watch it. It's important. But... I, this is what I think the film would have been much more powerful. Kalechi shows up. Per our, like, American standards. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing about it. Because sometimes I'm kind of like, is it, does this feel slow? Because in America, we can, you know, I get my phone, I call an Uber, it's here in two minutes, or, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. But let me, let me say this. I think the suspense would have been better built up if Kelechi shows up mm-hmm. and you find out uh, Toma, who is actually Toma and Kelechi are married. Mm-hmm. And throughout the whole film, you t- don't realize that. You just know Toma is sort of the leader of Kati Kati. And, and he's he, he been drinking. He and he's been drinking. Like he's also drink. been in Kati Kati for a very, very long time. And so he's sort of depressed when people get to move on and he has to stay behind. He gets frustrated. And, and he's, he's haunted by his demon. He's haunted demon, by his the, spirit. His, I don't call it there's, a, there's a spirit, this other, this mirror self that haunts him and sort of calls him a fuck up, calls him an alcoholic. And sort of that's what he, that's his. Think like the movie haunting. Us. And actually, this is what I are tethered, which which I want to I want to get back to as well. But Kalachi Kalachi shows up. You find right away, very quickly, ten minutes. You're dead, right? The second thing, within ten minutes, you should have found out Kalachi and Toma were married, and then the rest of the film is uh, Kalachi discovering parts of this world that we had a lot of unanswered questions and then Toma sort of having this internal struggle of how he approaches, uh, Kalechi and how he talks to her. And I think that suspense would have been, um, much more better, uh, built just 
as far as time wise, because as you said, it was really drawn out because you knew something was up. Uh, but also I, I knew fairly early that Kalechi and Toma knew each other because mm-hmm. at one point Toma has a piano in his room. He's playing a tune. Kalechi comes in, knows the tune, and there's some indication that they do know each other. I thought that would have been a much, much more Yeah, or she would setup. do little things and then say, like in one scene, Mikey almost drowns in a pool. I think he's actually the trying kid, to... The high the school kid, kid. The high school kid. I think he's trying to kill himself again. Like he just... Maybe he wants to be out of Kati Kati. And uh, Kalechi sees him drowning. She pulls him out of the pool. She resuscitates him, brings him back to life. And then she says, like, I think I used to be a doctor in my real life. Like, doing that just felt very familiar. Um, I, I, know I've do, I know I've done CPR on people several times. Like, And so she's looking to Toma to confirm or deny, which he does neither. He's like, just stop asking questions. And it's just like... Toma, like, give a girl something. Like, you can tell her what her career used to be without telling her y'all were married. But but he sort of, throughout the entire movie, is consistently saying to her, stop asking questions. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Don't stop asking questions. Which is frustrating as an audience member because, essentially, we are Kalechi moving through the movie. So you're just like, I, if I'm going to be in this, like, sort of, like, perfect but miserable existence for who knows long? Like, can I at least know who I was in my past life? Can I see something before I start being haunted by, you know, my spirit? Something. Yeah. So that was frustrating as a viewer. Looking back at it, you start to realize Toma, it was actually very villainous Mm -hmm. in the way that he withheld uh, information from Kaleche. Also, uh, I do want to talk about this world building because I, it felt like to me, these elements of the world of Kati Kati were just thrown in there without any further backstory. Yes. Behind them. I'm not really, I'm not sure there might've been, I've only watched it once. You might have to watch it twice where when I first watched us mm-hmm. and I can't really think of any other movie, but there are movies out this where you watch a movie for the first time through And you know you missed a lot the first time you watched it. Mm -hmm. But you know that even though you missed a lot, there was still substance there and there were still answers. So, you know, if you went back and watched it, you would probably get answers to some of your lingering questions. Where this movie, it sort of felt like we're just going to throw these things in here and we're not going to give you enough hints to figure out. Where a movie like Us, there's enough hints for you to figure out the world building and how a lot of the, the rules mm-hmm. worked. And you might have a couple of questions or want to read a couple of think pieces. But I remember for Kati Kati, as I was trying to research think pieces, questions still went unanswered. It was like, well, it's, it's left up to the viewer's interpretation on how you want to take this. But I'm just kind of like, yes, but I don't want five things left up to my interpretation. Like, answer one of these five questions because I want to know about... The food rumbling. I want to know what she did in her former life that now she's being haunted by her evil spirit. Or like, I I have so many lingering questions that I don't, and I don't think I want a sequel. So, well, that that that's not a bad thing if you don't want a sequel. And I would also, I I don't think the movie was bad. I'm just saying. I I would also be careful how we say like evil spirit because mm -hmm. I think the the film did a really good job of you know, me putting a moral judgment or an ethical judgment on something, me saying good job. However, I think that the film showed that there was no good or bad with the things that were haunting these people. That dichotomy doesn't exist. It's not, it's not a horror. It's not a horror film. It's, it's, it is a horror film. It is not. It is. If you look it up, like look it up. And the internet says, the internet is like haunting horror film. Oh, so it's a horror film because the internet says... I'm, if I'm, the director I'm, says, I wanted to make a horror film that was different... It's... It... It's... It deals with, um... So now you get to tell the director... No, no, no. Well, the direct horror is... No, I think when, when someone, when a director puts out a product or when anything is written and... They say, you know, well, I'm going to label it this. The viewer then can interact with that and say, actually, no, it doesn't have that element. Or uh, the un- there's an uncanny yeah. there's an uncanny element to it where people do make the argument when something has an uncanny, 
it's horror. So maybe, maybe it is, but for me, it didn't. Okay, so maybe it is a horror film, but mm-hmm. it's definitely no horror film than you than that you've ever seen. And I, I want to be careful when people when we say horror, they might think of Halloween, or they might yeah, think of, it's definitely not the it's not a slasher film, and it, it honestly feels more of like suspense or I would just I would just call it a purgatory film. Yeah, it deals with purgatory. It deals with. What happens when you die and you have unfinished business and how yeah. how that sort of ending, that permanent ending, um, affects you in, in a different way. And also it, it asks the question, there are moments even in our lives where we have this permanent ending. Things just stop and we look back and we know we can never go back to that, that, after, that before life, but we can still reflect on it. And I think that does... Uh, this film does a, a great job of showing the power of reflection when there's a definite ending point. Uh, yeah. so. I mean, I think it, I'm definitely curious and excited to watch more Kenyan films because I just, I, I need to sort of like recalibrate my pacing for films when I watch foreign films because almost Every film, almost every non-American film I watch, I have a pacing issue. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, when I watch a film that has a host of other actors in other countries, I, or what? what's that film that we saw in Thailand? It was really good, but I still had a pacing issue. Uh, it might have been a Korean film. Uh, it was, yeah, it was called it was The called Burning. The Burning. The Burning. I remember thinking the same thing, or I remember really loving uh, Old Boy, like the original Old Boy. I was like, whoo, we are burning some time here. So I don't, I, I'm starting to think that, you remember? That was a really good film, but I don't know... Like, I think it's because in America, we just watch so many films. And if that's not like a cold open where people are getting their heads cut off and bullets through the sky and the film comes in and like does some quick combat right away. I, I, I question like, because I've seen so many different American films and you know, they give it to us like, ah, 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 ah. Well, I think I would call it laugh track culture, right? Like you're you're cued to laugh or you're cued to respond mm-hmm. by an external um, laugh track, right? Okay, right. And if you grow up watching lots of sitcoms, yeah. you're so cued to respond, right? And so then when you watch something like The Office, you're like, "What? Where's the? Well, the should I laugh here? <laughs> well, the cues the cues are still there though. The they, cues are still there, but the, I remember the screen, which is so. I so remember very as a viewer going yeah. from a shift of like watching. The Huxtables, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, to watching something like Parks and Rec or The Office, still fu- they're all funny to me. But I remember thinking like, I don't understand this like deadpan comedy thing yet. And then I got calibrated to it because there were so many types of what. Don't I, you start talking just, shit about? I'm not the talking. I no no. The Office is fine. It, it, true horror. True horror. <laughs> you it's so first i want to talk about the burning i do want to talk about the burning because i'm not necessarily i don't think this is just a foreign thing right Uh, no i i my point is i don't think it's a foreign thing i think america foreign film foreign i'm 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 saying the problem is not films the problem is not every other country the problem is american movies that's what i'm saying well i think you're also thinking I yes maybe but for me like the fact that the director in another country called this a horror film and you don't think it's a horror film is something that I'm like I think we have the problem uh, yeah I think it for American idea of horror yes maybe but it does have that what you know, Freud calls the uncanny which most people believe makes horror harder mm-hmm. okay but one thing I, I do do want to address is that if you go there's lots of American films like I loved Moonlight, loved it. Right, that's, a, that's very an slow film. But I can't watch it again. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. because it took so much of my time. Or like most Tarantino films, you're like, woo, like we are. But but most movies aren't made like that. 
most movies are like... Well, they, I think they used to be, right? When you think of mm. like Citizen Kane, with the Orson Welles movie I was trying to think of, okay. which I love. These are two hours, like, th- you know, three hour That's films. Push. That's sort of the, push! <laughs> push! <laughs> I, yeah, and I think maybe our ex, our ex, our attention span has definitely For sure. changed. I remember reading a book in college called The Dumbest Generation, which Yikes. I... You can go check out this book, but th- his argument is that because we ha- uh, memorize, we don't memorize phone numbers anymore. It's stored in our phone because mm-hmm. our information is so easily accessible. Yeah, our you don't attention- even know my phone number. Know, We've right. been together five, going on six years. That will be what haunts me in purgatory. Yep. Your phone. You're gonna have to like, like fog me. It's like like these- the shining style, like <laughs> uh-huh. John is a good boy or whatever the fuck. Like you're I'll gonna have to write this. that. So uh, anyway, I. I I think there has definitely been this switch to how we gain information and how that affects our attention span. But also the burning. Uh, yeah. I think another reason why that was... So good, though. It was really... It was but slow. I can't watch it again. I think a part of the reason that sort of was difficult for us to watch was it's a Korean... It was a Korean film mm-hmm. uh, uh, based on a Japanese short story, Japanese writer's short story. Mm-hmm. And we saw it in Thailand right? Uh, with Thai subtitles. We saw it with English subtitles. There was no? English and Thai subtitles going on at the at same, same time. time. Right. It was, it was a very bizarre experience. So I'm not, I'm not exactly sure if that's, it, it could have been because it's a slower film or yeah. a, a slow burn. The a slow burn. We, or I think about, uh, I felt like at some points Parasite felt slow to me. Mm. Love Parasite. But I remember thinking like, ooh, how long have we been sitting here? You know, it sort of made me sad though that this movie, Kati Kati, it was made in 2016, didn't get as much traction. Nothing, but it had and 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, well... Which, you know. It had, there's like seven reviews, but I'm curious now if we're going to see more films from Kenya because... There's been a breakthrough of the foreign film industry that Parasite won an Academy yep. Award, Gilded. right? Yeah, Gilded. and uh, there are parts of Kati Kati that probably culturally went over our heads, and there were lots of parts of Parasite that just went over our heads mm-hmm. about Korean culture. But we still enjoyed it, and we still yeah. enjoyed Kati Kati. I think people need to go watch these films because they do say something different about genre, absolutely, and specifically, I feel like. They were looking at purgatory and in a different kind, a different kind of way as as well. So, huge. and it and it stretches our mind and our thinking of like what horror is, what what we can. I, I it was so refreshing to watch a movie without CGI. It I, I don't know that to, to to see the the creative ingenuity that they use in other countries that, and and I'm not saying animators aren't creative. I mean, they've done some bad ass stuff with animation, but it's the same thing last week when we were talking about how refreshing it is to go back and watch tales from the crypt and all these puppets and how you just don't see that anymore. Like puppets are because puppets take a certain, like people go to school to study puppetry and artistry. So, you're getting less of those people and more tech people. And it's, so it's really nice to see like catch up for blood. It's really nice to see just chalky whiteness painted on people's bodies to symbolize them starting to face that haunting spirit. Uh, Which would have just been like a CGI effect if it was an American movie. And and this movie is so much better than so so many other American films that have like Period. millions and millions of dollars of a budget. What, it was way better than the Lovely Bones. I'll tell you that much. That was Lovely Bones. Was, I haven't. I haven't it was seen not it. that great. <laughs> so, but uh, what's the, the little girl named Sarasi Saras? Sarsi Ronan. Yes, uh, that was like one of her first films. But Period. this this film I was reading about was a development of like a workshop of uh, Kenyan directors coming together to produce uh, another film. So it, there's this mu- there's this intimacy to the film as well, mm-hmm. and also this economy to the film that allows you to tell this very, very direct story. Um, uh, the themes are very clear with it. Yeah. Uh, you can unpack some of the world building. 
And it just, it, it was encouraging to, for me. As an artist. As a, yeah, and I'm sure as, even for you, is that people really just need friends and they, and, and a, a handheld camera and then some creature effects and you can have a really great like, story absolutely. as long as you have strong writing and you, as long as you have a, a, a idea of purgatory, in this case purgatory, and you're building off of that idea. You don't need a lot to make a really great film. And it sort of disgusts me when we have these gluttonous films. And like Michael Bay's Transformers oh. 15. Oh. You're just like, it's... I don't need to see this. <laughs> I cannot watch another Fast and Furious. Like, why do these movies keep getting made when there are such powerful stories? I woke up this morning and told you about a great dream I had that I wanted us to, like, free write on as a screenplay. But it's like, that's not what's being made. What's being made is, like, Scarlett Johansson Presents. <laughs> Cars 4. I'm like, what? I mean, I would love to see that film. I, <laughs> <Ew>. I, <laughs> Fucking Scar Joe. All right. Something that this question, a question I didn't think about until later was when people move on, when people move on, when people move on, which is sort of what we discover at the final you know, scenes of the movie, are they going to a better place? And I'm not exactly sure. Mm -hmm. I think that the film could have done more to give us this lingering doubt that them moving on is actually not good yeah. or not healthy. Or maybe they're moving.